Welcome to In-Depth. From a satellite image of Evansville, it looks like a little nickel just sitting there north of downtown. But that represents more than 100 years of America's pastime. Baseball. Bossy field. Built at a time America was evolving in the industrial age. So how do you put all of this into a book, a story. Well, I'm joined tonight by a man who has done just that. He is Kevin Worthwine. He is a journalist who has the love of sports running through his veins. Now, his book is titled Baseball in Evansville, Booms, Busts, and One Global Disaster. And that title will get our attention right off the bat. Kevin, thanks for being here tonight. First question I've got for you, who in the world is Papa Bear? Uh, Papa Bear is my grandfather, who showed me baseball, as yep. I say. How did he do that? Uh, when Evansville finally got an, a minor league team back in the city after nine years without one in 1966, my grandfather um, bought box seats right out of the bat and would take me to game after game after game in Bossy Field to see my favorite team, the Evansville White Sox. Uh, class double A team, uh, farm team of the White Sox. And I learned baseball and I learned to love Boston Field and I, uh, there was nothing like it. And you, you were hooked. And with this history lesson that you're presenting in this book, would it have been possible, would it even be here now if Bossy Field had not been built? Th that, that's hard to say, but I can't imagine that it would. Um, Bossy Field is, as you know, as iconic as only probably two other uh, stadiums in the country right now, Wrigley Field and mm -hmm. Fenway Park. It's the third oldest professional and continuous use and, field. And long before cookie cutters, we had ours right here in Evansville, Absolutely. but it was way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. It was a multi-purpose stadium. Unheard of. And... Well, of course, we have the Otters today, and mm -hmm. that is a remarkable story in itself. Uh, but AAA baseball, this book really is taking us back into the 19th century in the 1800s. So give me a brief Cliff Notes version of getting from that point to AAA baseball. Well, I, it, you're, you're right. It, uh, baseball in Evansville started really right after the Civil War. So my book actually splits it in half. The first 50 years of baseball until Bossy Field was built and the, the last 50 or so uh, until um, Evansville reached the pinnacle of minor league baseball. And let's take a look at just some of the pictures here that uh, you've, you've been able to present in this, uh, this uh, remarkable essay and memoir you've got here, this history book, mm -hmm. uh, as you will call it. Uh, and it brings me to this poem, and, I, and it's basically the words of Bart Giamatti, who was the commissioner of Major League Baseball for just about five months before he passed away in the very late 80s. He wrote, baseball is designed to break your heart. The game begins in the spring when everything else begins again, and it blossoms in the summer, filling the afternoons and evenings, and then as soon as the chill, the rains come, it stops and leaves you to face the fall all alone. Would you say that pretty well describes baseball in Evansville? I think it why. perfectly describes it. It, it. In my book, I will start off with seasons of hope that end in despair. I will have decades of hope that end in despair. Um, for instance, after the turn of the century, Evansville uh, baseball was affected by two world wars, the war in Vietnam, Korea, two major floods, a Great Depression, all kinds of events. And, and the bleachers that were built before Bossy Field near the stockyards, that is a story in itself. That's a story in itself. In fact, that was the impetus for Bossy Field to be built because in uh, th that, it was called Old League, League Park. And... Uh, it was built out of wood, and in 1914, at field day exercises in May, the grandstands collapsed, injuring 42 people, which Mayor Bossy saw as an opportunity. And, and speaking of opportunities, and just 
The number of teams in Evansville, I think this is what surprised me, and especially uh, uh, it, it's remarkable there were so many teams there. Well, of course, the triplets uh, and now the otters uh, and uh, the Black Sox. And that team basically had, was kind of prophetic in some ways. It was prophetic. Um, after World War I one ended and baseball started up again, um, it had basically shut down. The first uh, minor league team that came back to Evansville was named the Evansville Black Sox. And prophetically, Wait, at the end of 1919, um, a Chicago team um, garnered that name infamously. I've got just less than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You like the Otters? They're not part of this book. I love the Otters. I think that's the most remarkable organization. That I takes us kind of back to time. It does. It does. Independent. Okay. As all ball players were back in the day. All righty. Well, it is a fascinating uh, history lesson right here. Baseball in Evansville, booms, busts, and one global disaster. Kevin, thank you so much for joining thank us you. tonight. It's Good to thrill. talk to you. I, I could have talked to you for another hour. I could talk for <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Thank you. You're watching Eyewitness News at 9. Brandon will be back in just a moment.